On this week's Flame Central, we circle the bases with Flames outfielder Aaron Anderson, and we get you caught up on Liberty football at the conclusion of spring practice. Plus, the story of a Liberty diver finding peace amidst the storm. It's all straight ahead. You're watching Flame Central. From the diamond to the gridiron to the pool, we've got a little bit of everything on this That's week's right. Flame Central. Welcome on in. Thanks for making us part of your day. Alongside Rhett McGibbon, I'm Matt Warner. Yeah, it was a big week for Liberty Baseball and Softball. They both hosted in-state rival Virginia Tech. And that's where we start things off today. Yeah, we begin with baseball. The Flames coming off a huge three-game sweep over FGCU this past weekend. And they would welcome in the Hokies on Tuesday. Virginia Tech having just broken into the top 25. Now, Liberty had dominated this series of late, winning three straight, five of the last seven. But it would be the Hokies striking first in this one. They would hang four on the board in the fourth inning. But this game, far from over. Virginia Tech, one of the more explosive offenses in the country. And Liberty showing you some explosiveness as well in the fifth. Liberty, a four-run frame of their own. Four walks would help set the stage. And then the big blow coming off the bat of freshman Cam Foster. A two-RBI double would knock things up at four apiece. But then the long ball came into play. Virginia Tech second in the nation in homers. And they would get a pair from Gavin Cross and Case Hunter. That would set the Hokies up with a 10-4 advantage. Logan Matthew would add a ninth inning home run of his own for Liberty, but it wouldn't be enough on this night as Virginia Tech claims the win 10 to six in front of the 10th biggest crowd in Worthington Field history. Well, staying with baseball, Aaron Anderson has been one of the most consistent hitters in the Flames lineup for the past year and a half. An all-conference performer last season, he's trending that way again, entering the weekend second on the team in batting and leading the Flames in multi-hit games. The senior didn't start his career at LU, but he's finishing with a flourish. And recently, our Emily Austin caught up with him for a trip around the bases. So before Liberty Baseball hits the field for some BP, let's go around the bases with Aaron Anderson. Anderson yanks one to right, and it is bare. Aaron, pretty unique story of how you came to Liberty. Coach Jackson was saying that he was up here at the picnic tables giving you a FaceTime tour of the facilities and the field due to the COVID regulations. What made you go with and take that leap of faith and go with this Liberty program? It was one of those things where I was just very, very drawn to the school from the start. I, I was really attracted to the culture and the Christian environment here. Uh, had heard some really, really great things about Coach Jackson from people both at Liberty and, and outside of the program. And then the other big factor that contributed to the decision was we won baseball games here. And that was something that I wanted to, <laughs> to be a part of. Yeah. <laughs> Number nine, Aaron Anderson. We obviously got to have a really, really unique experience last year going to Knoxville and getting beaten that. And hopefully we're going to be able to do the same thing this year. One thing you have brought with you to Liberty is your bat. Aaron, what has contributed to your success at the plate? I mean, is it a specific person that, that coached you along the way? Is it your routine? I've been really, really fortunate to have some good coaches. At Flagler, we had a guy that his name's Dusty Rhodes. He uh, coached in North Florida, head coach there for about 20 years, took them from NIA to D1. And the reason that I got to play college baseball, he coached my dad at North Florida. Uh, Ooh, a rival. Yeah, my dad played on the first four teams there. and. But he cheers for the Flames he now. He does, Okay, yes. okay, oh, yeah. just had to get that straight. He was in Liberty gear when, <laughs> when we went down there a few okay, weeks good. ago. And then obviously here, the work that I've done with Coach Jackson and Coach Cannon, uh, kind of establishing a routine and learning how to hit at this level. It's a little bit different. You, you see some arms that are pretty, pretty talented and can't always be successful, but they've allowed me to, to do as much as I can to help us win. That one turns Mulkey around and it's going to be over his hand for a ground rule double. I feel like you're one of the biggest leaders in this group. How important was it for you to come to a program where you could have that leadership role? I'm intense. Uh, that's probably one of the biggest. If you talk to guys in the clubhouse, uh, I'm intense. I want to win. And sometimes that can be good. Sometimes it can be <laughs> bad. But, I, you know, I hope I, I can help guys stay focused on what we're here to do, which is grow closer, but also win baseball games. Okay, Aaron, as we round third base, going home, kind of a metaphor for the close of your collegiate baseball career. Have you had time to reflect on that, or are you just too locked in and focused on the season? I've obviously thought about it, but I'm, I've focused in on the year. There's a lot of season to be left, and there's a lot of stuff that we want to accomplish as a team. 
I don't know many people who've gotten six years to play college baseball, <laughs> and I'm grateful for the experiences and different opportunities and different people that I've gotten to come into contact with. I know that you only spent two seasons with this Liberty Baseball program, but what do you want to leave behind in terms of who Aaron Anderson is as a baseball player, as a person? What do you want to leave behind for this program? We have three pillars, compete, serve, and grow, and, and that's one of the biggest things. I know I've grown as a person. I hope that the people around me, I've helped them grow as people and as players, and I hope that we've been able to compete at a higher level because I've, I've been here and I hope that we continue to do that throughout the rest of the season. This interview might be done, but you guys and your season is far from over and hopefully your work done right here in this box <laughs> is, is far from over as well. Aaron, thank you so much for your thank time. You. Great to have you here on the mountain. I appreciate it. Hey, we're just getting started. All right, turning the page over to softball. The Lady Flames have been on a tear lately. Winners of 14 in a row. They would focus their attention on the only team in the state of Virginia that has a better record, nationally ranked at number two, Virginia Tech. Great crowd at Liberty Softball Stadium taking in this game. Top of the first, Hokies would load the bases. Meredith Slaw would just drop this ball into left field, and that would score Troll and Fagan 2-0 Tech. Fast short. forward to the bottom of the fifth, Hokies up 3-0. Mary Claire Wilson would draw the walk via the illegal pitch. Moments later, Alexis Soto would rattle the chains a little more with a line shot to right center. The RBI double would bring the Flames back into the game at 3-1. Hokies, though, number two in the nation for a reason. Top of the seventh, the head full one. Fagan, Lauder, and Bennett would all go yard to add on four more total runs. They'd take it by a final of 8-1, ending Liberty's win streak. The Flames will look to return the favor May 3rd when they travel to Blacksburg. All right, let's talk some football. Admittedly, Liberty football head coach Hugh Freeze, not a big spring game guy, but that didn't stop LU from inviting fans to come out this past Saturday to get a first look at the 2022 edition of the Flames. And while there were a few flashes offensively, namely running back J.D. Hunter, the defense dominated the day, holding the offense only three touchdowns on 17 possessions. As for the quarterback position, who will be under center to begin the season is still anyone's guess. Freeze said that decision may well go into game week. The Flames battled a lot of injuries this spring, especially on the offensive side of the ball. But all in all, Freeze likes what he's seen out of this group and the attitude that they possess. I really don't remember a spring where we had 14 better practices with attitude, effort, demeanor, chemistry. You know, obviously execution is always uh, uh, questionable from day to day as you're learning. But um, I really thought our kids bought in to giving us 15 great days uh, of effort and I think that's a good really good place to start building the new DNA of a, of a new season of a new team. Speaking of football you're going to want to tune in next week for one week we're no longer Flame Central we're Malik Central. We spend the entire episode focusing on Malik Willis the former Liberty quarterback and his path to the NFL draft where he's expected to be a first round draft pick. We'll have guests mock drafts, everything you need to get ready for the draft. On the 28th, we hope you'll join us. Yeah, I can't wait. It's going to be fun. All right, let's head to the National Game of Canada Lacrosse. Lady Flames on a roll offensively since dropping that tight game against Duke. First quarter versus Stetson. Liberty would put it in the bag, scoring 10 first quarter goals. This would be a career day for multiple Flames. Mackenzie Lehman would tally six. Jordan Shive potted four in a seven-point day. And Lizzie Ferguson would collect her first career hat trick along with five draw controls. LU would cruise to a 22-9 victory, remaining perfect in ace on conference play. The Flames would look to take that momentum and head into a contest versus number 11, JMU. Unfortunately, somebody would forget to pack it on the bus trip to Harrisonburg. This would be by far the most lopsided defeat the Flames had suffered all season long. JMU would jump out to a 9-0 lead in this contest, and they would never look back, taking it by a final of 22-3. The Dukes are now on a seven-game winning streak and continue to climb the poles. All right, still to come on Flames Central, the story of talented Flames diver Maddie Fries, and we bring you our Flames top moment in the past 50 years. Plus, Rhett and I bring you another warm, hot in fuego. You'll want to catch that. Flames Central coming right back. Times are changing. At Liberty, we've made it our priority to grow, to learn, to improve. But even with all the change, our purpose remains. 
we want to equip people to go make a difference through their calling in their communities around the world. And though we are blessed with an amazing campus, our most valuable resource has always been the people, our students, and those who inspire them. It's the people who serve, maintain, support. It's you. But what's really important, not the buildings, not the mountain, not the property, but the young people who use these buildings, who study in these facilities, they are important. No matter what the future holds, we will stay focused on our goal. And the people of Liberty University are how we will continue to carry out our mission. They are the ones who empower us to train training champions for Christ. Christ. Champions for Christ. Training champions for Christ. Since 1971, Liberty's had one mission, training champions for Christ. Our standard is excellence with integrity, and our goal is to equip you with the resources and knowledge you need to achieve your goals. We, the caregivers at Liberty University, are committed to serving others as the hands and feet of Christ. That's why our professors aren't just teachers, they're practicing clinicians in their communities, and why we set high academic standards. Our graduates have a 92% pass rate for first-time test takers on the nursing licensure exam. And our first-time FNP certification takers have an even higher pass rate. Because whether you're studying online or on campus, and whether your focus is pediatrics, oncology, or mental health, our goal is to give you all of the skills, knowledge, and resources you need to change the lives of the people who need it most. Baseball season tickets are on sale now. Get yours at LibertyFlames.com. Hey, welcome back to Flames Central. Year after year, Liberty Golf quietly goes about its business, playing at a high level and putting itself in position for a postseason berth. This year, it's no different. The Flames are ranked number 36 in the nation coming into this past week's Louis Chitangwa Memorial in Charlottesville, Virginia. As a team, LU would finish in sixth place with a six under par score, 11 shots back of the event winner. Individually, Liberty was led by Kieran Vincent, who captured his 25th career top 10 finish as he placed third with a score of seven under par. The 25 top 10s is the second most in program history. Now up next for the Flames, the A-Sun Championship at the end of the month. They are the defending champs at the event. All right, let's hop into the deep end. Liberty sophomore Maddie Fries has been voted CCSA Women's Diver of the Year for the second year in a row. She's the first back-to-back -back winner of the award since 2015. During this season, Fries was named the 2022 Co-Most Outstanding Diver of the CCSA Championship Meet, winning the one-meter dive while setting a program record just two years into her LU career, and she already has three conference individual titles and four CCSA podium finishes. Maddie was a huge part of the Flames collecting their fourth straight CCSA Women's Swimming and Diving Championship title. Yeah, big congratulations to Maddie. Her success is made all the more special by what she's gone through to get to this point. Health challenges and anxiety could have derailed her career entirely, but a Bible verse and a decision to surrender would set her on a path to peace and help her reach new heights in her sport. Maddie Fries has been following the same morning routine since she was a child. Her story includes highs, lows, life-threatening moments, and a strong faith in Christ forged through the trials. 
Growing up, I had a lot of medical conditions. I have a lot of anaphylactic, which means life-threatening food allergies. I have severe fragile asthma, and I have a condition with my esophagus called eosinophilic esophagitis, which is commonly paired with children who have food allergies and asthma. They're life-threatening. So in my head, I'm thinking, how long will it take for it, A, either to get worse or for it to get better? And B, when would this happen again? After high school, Maddie would come to Liberty University, where she would compete as a diver. But this new phase of life didn't mean that her health challenges were in the past. When I got to college and I was learning to live on my own and handle things on my own, things kind of got not out of hand, but it definitely wasn't easy. I hit the ground running. It was like my first weekend here. I had to go to urgent care because I had an allergic reaction. I had to go to the hospital to get an emergency procedure done on my esophagus because I was having an esophageal attack. And that was really kind of like nerve wracking because it was a week out from conference. I'm thinking, I'm kind of panicked because my food allergies, like I said, are like anaphylactic, so they're life-threatening. So in my head, I'm thinking, how much longer is it gonna take till this escalates, till it gets worse? And I always have the fear in the back of my head that I'm gonna get to that point where like, I'm not breathing because it's anaphylactic and that's a huge fear. In addition to that fear, there was also anxiety surrounding her diving as her first conference championship meet was fast approaching. It was then that Maddie found a Bible verse that would change her entire perspective. I was very, very, very nervous because I had to do well in order for my team to do well. And I remember I was laying in bed one night thinking about conference and my palms just started getting sweaty and I couldn't fall asleep and my heart was racing. And I was reading through Psalms at the time and I read Psalm 115.1 and it said, not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory because of your love and faithfulness. And when I read that, it was kind of like a convicting moment where God was like, you're not doing this for yourself and you're not doing this for your team as much as I love my team, but you're doing this for me. And I don't care how well you do. I care about how much you fear me and how much you love me. And I still get nervous to compete, but in that situation, my fears and anxieties were kind of alleviated because I was like, this doesn't define me. Like my identity is rooted in Christ, not being an athlete. And I went in the water and it was probably the best one I've ever done in my entire life. And I literally just remember thinking like, that was the Holy Spirit moving through me. Like I could not have done that by myself, even if I wanted to. And then the next day I just, I kind of walked through it with that peace and praise the Lord, I was able to compete well again. Um, and I put some more points on the board and our team was able to co-win conference championships with FGCU. So that was really exciting because our team won three years in a row. So. I think just like surrendering that meat to God, he literally took over. Like he, I let it down at his feet and he was like, okay, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna bless it. And I'm just really glad that like, with me surrendering it to him, that was his will. And that's how it turned out. And I'm honored that he had that as part of my plan. This new outlook now changes the way that Maddie approaches everything from her health challenges to competing at the highest levels of collegiate diving. Surrendering everything to him has allowed her to live freely and for a greater purpose. If this is what you have for me, if this is what you're planning for me, then I know that like it's better than what I could want for myself. So kind of surrendering that up to God and knowing that like it might not go the way I want it to go, but still trusting that he's gonna take it and honor and glorify his name out of it, regardless of how I feel like it's going for myself. God sees from the moment we're born to the moment we're gonna die. And he sees everything that's happening in between, all the good times, all the bad times. And he knows if you have good times and bad times ahead, and he's still letting you be where you are right now. Like he's still allowing you to walk forward and go through that. Um, and sometimes like the things you're gonna go through are gonna strengthen you for the things that he has in the future that he's preparing you for. So if you don't feel like you're close to God, I feel like it's just, there's three questions you would have to ask yourself. One, are you seeking him?
to. And instead of thinking like, why is this happening? Think like, what can I learn from this? Like, what is God trying to teach me from this? And then the third one is, how can I glorify God in the midst of this? Thanks to Helmut Montoya for producing that piece yeah. and to Maddie for sharing her story. All sure. right, time now for Warm, Hot, and Fuego. Yeah. Transition to the top play player moment from the past week in Liberty Athletics. Red, is there any kind of theme we're working with this week? Yeah, we're looking all these athletes are from like small towns yeah. in the yeah. USA, so we're going to talk about that. But all right, Warm Today is Caroline Hudson. Okay. It made me think of a song, and you know the song. You know the one, you don't tug on Superman's cape, you don't, don't spit, spit into, into the, the wind. wind, you don't pull the mask off that, that old, old Lone, Lone Ranger. Ranger, and you don't mess around with Caroline Hudson. Well, Huddy, yeah. don't mess around oh, with Oh my Huddy. goodness, yeah. she's from Paris, Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah. Guess what? There, they have the world's biggest fish fry. Fish fry, fish, it's, not fish. It's easier fish to fry. think yes. it than it is yeah, to say totally. it. Yeah, fish yeah. fry, huh? I'm kind of disappointed we haven't gotten an invite. I could go for Buddy, like a fish let's fry. Go. You know, like yeah. let's get out Make there. It they also have like a, a 70 foot version of the Eiffel Tower in Paris, Tennessee. We've been missing out yeah, on this. Time. But this young lady, best arm in the NCAA. Spring get these Paris. stats. Yes, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. Stolen base attempts. She's 15 to 34. That's 44% wow. success rate, yeah. best in the NCAA. Wow. And this isn't like she's going up against low tier competition. No you see right there, Virginia Tech. She's knocking down KSU that went to, you know, the regionals yeah. last year. She gets Arkansas as well. You know, Tennessee, when they were playing them last year, they had enough respect for her arm, they wouldn't run on her. So this is a young lady that's getting a little bit of a vibe around yeah. the NCAA, yeah. like you don't mess with her. Don't mess with her. Yeah, she has been so much fun to watch this season. The bat has come to life as well. Huddy is tremendous. All right, for yeah. warm we go to hot. Who's hot? All right, Darius McGee. Yeah. You're wondering, hey, this guy's not playing right now. He did get a big mention yeah. the, coming from uh, the co SID. That's right. Yeah, Boy, just like, yeah thank yeah. you. That's yeah. what it is. But hey, he's from Roxboro, North Carolina. You know what they still have there? What? They have those old pharmacies where you could go in and you could oh, also get, get like a sandwich. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Yeah, what is it? It's called Cole's Pharmacy. We're gonna have Another to... reason we need to go Let's down there. Show on the road, yeah, right? exactly. Our first player to win this award in program history, averaging 24.6 points a season. You guys all know the numbers. Yeah. Number one in the nation in total points was 812. Triples made with 142. Darius was tremendous. So fun to watch him play. That was one of my favorite moves right yeah. there that step back triple he was just unconscious so many times this season and uh yeah big honor for him and rightfully so one of the greats in flames yeah. history certainly all right finally in fuego your player and i'm guessing the hometown yeah mcmurray pennsylvania mackenzie layman okay on the lacrosse yeah. team this young lady had six goals this past game uh, and it was a big contest yeah. for her against Stetson. and she was just dominating. But in her hometown, Simmons Farm in October, they get the corn maze going, they get the Ooh. pumpkin patch, yeah. but they go above that. They also bring out a fire truck. Kids can play on it. I'm like, this would be a lot of just fun. Just kids hosing people down and, exactly. and like playing on the so. ladders. Yeah, and just yeah. firing them off their feet, all kinds of stuff. Wrong? Yeah, but hey. You take a look at her goals, six goals, career high for her. She just tap dances yeah. through the competition. She's tremendous. And uh, draw control, that's a big thing. She is great in the face-off dot for this group. Uh, as a sophomore, yeah. got that height, that reach. She has been a lot of fun to watch this year, and I think she's just going to keep on going, leading the team in goals. She's been terrific. All right, right. You're terrific. As always, still to come, we take a look back at one of the top moments in Liberty Athletics history. Spoiler alert, Brett McGibbon, this guy, might be on the call. That's right. You want to see that when Flame Central returns. Welcome to Liberty University's online programs. Where living out your calling with integrity is what you train to do. And getting ready for the future doesn't mean missing out on the now. Because a university is more than buildings and books. And an education should set you free, not fence you in. Welcome to Liberty's global campus, where distance learning was pioneered and evolved into one of the top ranked schools in the nation. Where protecting your budget your time and your education isn't just a theory, it's our priority. Here, degrees in your field reflect industry demands and help get you ahead of the competition. Where college comes to you, but you can come to college too. Game day, homecoming, graduation day, your school, your values, your experience, your choice. Welcome to Liberty University, where we train champions for Christ. 
What if we told you that your high school student can save time and money while getting a jump start on their college career? With Liberty University Online Academy, they can. We've partnered with Liberty University to create the largest nonprofit dual enrollment program in the country that's fully online, accredited, and Christ-centered. Our dual enrollment courses give juniors and seniors the opportunity to earn high school and college credit while saving an average of 70% on college tuition. And with eight start dates per year, it's easy to fit courses around any schedule. Speaking of courses, we have hundreds to choose from, all taught by Liberty University professors. Mm. In addition to receiving well-qualified training, every student is fully supported with our state-of-the-art services and personalized resources, including the online library, writing center, and one-on-one -on -one student advising. Now, let's talk options. We've put together three for you to choose from. Option one, the a la carte program. Students create their own schedule, choosing classes they want to take. Option two, the associate degree program. Students choose one of more than 15 degree paths, such as psychology, business, or criminal justice, and finish with both their high school diploma and associate degree, fast-tracking their bachelor's. Option three, the certificate program. With 10 different online certificates, including web development, project management, and business administration, this program is one of the fastest ways students can develop specialized skills. But regardless of which option you choose, your student will get a head start on college now. To find out more, visit us today at liberty.edu slash dual enrollment. Welcome back to Flame Central. Just about time to say goodbye, but before we do, let's take a look at a top moment from the past 50 years of Liberty Athletics. Yeah, we hope you've enjoyed these. We're getting near the end of the list. Yeah. Not there just yet, but this week we travel back to, all the way back to last year, oh when Amber Bishop Riley made some history. April 2nd, 2021. There's a drive center field. It's gone. History is made for Amber Bishop Riley. With that one swing of the bat, two records were broken. First, Amber Bishop Riley became the only softball player in NCAA history to hit at least 10 home runs in each of her five seasons of play. And second, she became Liberty's all-time home run leader with her 59th career four-bagger. Amber Bishop Riley is also the career record holder in six other offensive categories, making her one of the best athletes to ever put on a Liberty uniform. My man, Brett, on the call there. Nice job, Brett. A little Thanks. history. All right, hey, listen, you're going to want to tune in next week. All Malik Willis, yeah. the Flames quarterback, heading towards the NFL draft. We're going to focus on that and his journey and his time here at LU over the past couple of yeah, years. Yeah, hard to believe the draft is right around this. the corner. All eyes in Liberty Land are going to be tuned in. It's going to be a lot of fun. Can't wait to watch that. Well, that does it for this week's show. He's Matt. I'm Rhett. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll be right back here next week.